And now to a story that's still developing, what I'm about to show you might remind you of a video game, but it's happening in real life. Looks like a Hollywood movie, doesn't it? Except this is not a movie. This is a real military operation. Israeli Defense Forces conducted a raid in West Bank one of the deadliest raids in over two decades. It triggered a response from Hamas. It's a Palestinian militant group, Hamas. The Israelis call them terrorists. So Hamas hit back, and both sides have launched missiles at each other since. This is raising the fear of a fresh conflict in West Asia. The latest round started in Jenin, a Palestinian city in northern West Bank. The Israeli forces carried out a raid. At least nine Palestinians were killed, among them an elderly woman. Why did Israel launch this operation? They say they were going after terrorists. It happened in a refugee camp. The Israeli forces entered a building and detonated two explosives. The raid left a trail of destruction, not to mention widespread public anger in the West Bank. People chanted slogans to express solidarity with Jenin. This was the moment when tensions escalated. Hamas militants in Gaza fired rockets at Israel. Israel responded in kind. It conducted airstrikes on two locations, a rocket manufacturing site and a militant training area. Meanwhile, Palestinian leaders have snapped security ties with Israel. President Mahmoud Abbas calls on all Palestinian forces to an emergency meeting to agree on a comprehensive national vision and unity to confront the Israeli aggression. The region of Palestine is divided into two parts, the West Bank and Gaza. It is administered by what is called the Palestinian Authority. They've not had an election in almost two decades. Gaza is ruled by the Hamas. The militant group also calls itself a political party. The West Bank is managed by the government of Mahmoud Abbas. The Palestinian Authority now wants the United Nations to intervene. They plan to move to the UN Security Council, the UNSC. They also want an investigation by the International Criminal Court. Now, all of these are aggressive moves. And they're being made in response to Israel's actions. Israeli forces are stepping up raids across the West Bank. I have some numbers, in fact. More than 170 Palestinians were killed in 2022. They died across the West Bank and East Jerusalem. This month, at least 29 Palestinians have died, and this includes five children. The United Nations says 2022, last year, was the deadliest year for Palestinians since 2006. But 2023 is already on course to surpass that if the casualties continue in this way. And this could have some dangerous repercussions. The United Nations says Israelis and Palestinians are on a collision course. Sounds like an understatement. But they're warning of yet another full-scale Palestinian uprising. The biggest concern is the rise of armed groups in the West Bank. In recent months, many of them emerged, and I have a list here. The Jenin Brigades, the Nablus Brigades, the Lion's Den, the Balata Brigades, and the Yabad Brigades. Small groups as of today, but they're armed, and they pose a challenge to the Israeli army. When Israeli forces conduct a raid, these groups respond by opening fire. They also carry out shootings at Israeli checkpoints. So what does this escalation mean for Israel? They have a new government with some coalition members who are labeled as far right. The government is led by Benjamin Netanyahu. He's the prime minister. He has given prominent roles to some controversial figures. Netanyahu himself has been quite aggressive about Palestine, and there's little to suggest that he plans to dial down tensions. He has clearly stated that he wants to take control of more territory. His government has made West Bank settlements a top priority, and these raids are a manifestation of that plan. But the Israeli Prime Minister's resolve will be tested. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is set to visit the region next week. He is expected to meet both Israeli and Palestinian leaders. This flare-up will cast a shadow on the trip. Washington is calling for de-escalation. We recognize the very real security challenges facing Israel and the Palestinian Authority and condemn terrorist groups planning and carrying out attacks against innocent civilians. We also regret the loss of innocent lives and injuries to civilians and are deeply concerned by the escalating cycle of violence in the West Bank. 
I want to underscore the urgent need for all parties to de-escalate, to prevent further loss of civilian life, and to work together to improve the security situation in the West Bank. Palestinians and Israelis equally deserve to live safely and securely. Safety and security is a goal that has long eluded this region. The fight for land has claimed tens of thousands of lives, and now with missiles being exchanged again, the conflict may only escalate. This, like I said, is a developing story. We'll be tracking it for you.